Hello everyone and welcome to our Chit Chat podcast um, and another episode with our special guest, Reverend Trifina Lau. Um, before we go any further, maybe Reverend Trifina, you can introduce yourself to our listeners. I'm sure some will know you or maybe most people will know you, some may not know you. Not so la. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm Trifina. Okay, yes. uh, I have a very unique surname. It's Law. Mm-hmm. Law. Uh, so okay. undang undang, uh, Law. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm the uh, executive director mm-hmm. with PLUC, Pursuing Liberty Under Christ. Uh, it's a ministry that um, mm-hmm. serve those with uh, gender issues. Uh, well, the ministry has been around for the last 21 years, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been involved uh, for the last 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Wow, 20 years in this same ministry. Yeah, two um, decades. Huh? Okay, mm. how do you get into this uh, ministry, PLUC? Well, uh, I think that's, uh, that's quite a common question that many people tend to ask, you know, why are you mm. serving in this? So I always have to say that, well, um, I have the background. So I mm-hmm. was once a, a lesbian myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, um, because of the help that I get, you know, and somehow or another, uh, God very comical, la, you know. God like to use broken people, so He yes. placed me back in the ministry, mm-hmm. uh, and that's why I, I, you know, I've been called to serve those yeah. who probably have the same journey with me, la. Yeah, yeah. I think every one of us is broken in some way or another. But well, yes, yes, yes I agree yes. with that. <laughs> yes, I, 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 fully agree with you. By yes. the way, you can call me Trifina. Yeah. Yes. The only plus the Reverend are very Okay, long-minded. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I, I will also. I, you know, talking about brokenness, I think mm. the one who recognizes brokenness mm. is nearest to God, I would say. Um, because... Well, uh, I think when we are closer and closer to God, mm-hmm. we begin to see our own ugliness. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so with that, you know, we, we, we kind of have to acknowledge that we are just so broken. And, mm-hmm. and I think the opposite side of it is that you end up being very grateful. Mm. You know, grateful that uh, even though with the kind of brokenness that uh, I went through, and I'm sure others have their own set of brokenness, mm-hmm. but God is willing to give me that second chance to to serve Him even in this ministry. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Now we talk about, um, you know, the LGBTQ, mm-hmm. mm. yeah, right? You can use LGBTQ, that. Yeah. Um, I think it, the, it, they keep adding on. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Um, and it's a very popular topic nowadays it can make or break a friendship (laughs) right it can get people out of jobs (laughs) you know with a wrong statement or Mm. whatnot but i think as a church sometimes um you know we were just talking earlier on before this Mm. whole thing and how sometimes we 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 really shy away from this Mm. topic Mm. but it's right there it's in our church if it's not in our church is there confronting our people and mm-hmm. our people are facing it. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you approach um, this subject? Well, I think first thing first, I would, I would like to maybe clarify that I don't think the church fully shy away. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, I would say that they wouldn't touch what they are not aware or they do not have a knowledge. Yep. So usually what we don't know, we preferably we don't touch it. Mm-hmm. Okay, because it's really opening a, a, a different can of worms in a way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so I I don't fully agree that churches shy away. It's just mm-hmm. that uh, as they are more exposed, as they are more aware, or as they begin to be more equipped, then um, gradually they would they would use different platform, just like what we're doing right now. You know, yep. using a different platform yep. to to bring forth a message. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Do you see a day where you know we can speak about this topic? openly through the pulpit without being condemned without being judged or without being labeled ourselves mm-hmm. well i think i think i want to use the word uh, which globally they like to use inclusiveness yeah. inclusiveness All right? yes uh, i think our understanding of inclusiveness is different than how the world look at mm. inclusiveness okay i think as a church our inclusiveness does have uh, uh, boundaries in a way mm-hmm. okay that means uh, as we accept them we accept anybody. You know, our door, mm-hmm. the church door is open. La. Church is like a hospital, right? Yes. Okay, and any, all kind of it's broken It's a place people, for, like broken. Yeah, <laughs> for broken, for I mean, broken people. Some people don't think they're broken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. but, but anyone that step into the church, basically mm-hmm. the church door is open. Mm-hmm. And we are actually called to 
be inclusive in a way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which means that the, the church is learning how to be as, uh, to exercise acceptance, but this acceptance is differ. Uh, it should be different than how the world look at it. Acceptance does not equal to affirming. Mm. You know, it's just like if I have somebody that comes in, and that person likes to gossip. Well, I accept the person as who the person is, but mm-hmm. does not equal to us, you know, endorsing Affirming. the gossiping behavior yes, in yes. a sense. Yeah, that's right. So I think church has its. Uh, it does have its role to play, la, in a sense. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, being involved in the work for the last twenty years per se, um, the church has come a long way. Mm-hmm. All right, I, I need to do justice to that because yep. they are. Uh, churches that I'm being more open today than than probably a decade ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now back to the organization mm-hmm. uh, or the ministry that you are in, the P- yeah. PLUC people like us. No, pursuing liberty. I'm, per- oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but no, no, you are correct. You're correct. The PLU, mm-hmm. uh, Pastor Matthew, stands for people like us. Okay. So we added a C in front. Pursuing liberty, liberty under, under Christ. Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you uh, you have brought up a very interesting yep. word, <laughs> which is PLU, which stands for mm-hmm. the. Um, in the past, uh, you know, for a long, long time ago, Singapore, Malaysia, they like mm-hmm. to, uh, the community, the LG, especially the the homosexuals community or the gay community. Okay. They would use the word PLU. Mm. Yeah. All right. So you take that, but you just uh, change the founder, them. La, I, actually, I'm the second person who took over the ministry. Okay. So the early founder when they first started they decided that we coined ourselves as PLU and the C. So if you look at our logo, the C is, is like in a drop of blood. <laughs> because okay. change is only possible because of the power of Jesus. I see. Transformation wow. can only take place because of the cross. Yes, yeah, that's So right. the C represents Christ or represents mm-hmm. change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so um, pursuing liberty under Christ, Christ. Yes. Uh, basically this ministry, so how do you all uh, you go about you know, helping mm. uh, people who yeah. say, so do they come to you? Mm. Or how does yeah. it work? Well, you're asking the, the very uh, common market Questions. <laughs> uh, okay, how do we? Because we I think uh, for a lot of our <laughs> listeners, they, they may not have heard of you know yes, this, they this may not ministry. Have, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we are, we are actually quite low. I, I would consider ourselves. We don't really promote ourselves. Okay. Okay. We don't promote, but uh, for the last twenty years, uh, we have kind of partnered with churches. You know, we get invitation to speak in church. We get invitation to speak in colleges, mm. uh, or certain platforms which are open. Who. I mean, they kind of found out about us and then they invited us. So mm. basically, PLUC, um, we have a threefold mission. Lah. Okay, so we call uh, the threefold mission be relate, advocate, and educate. Okay. So relate as in the area of providing pastoral care and pastoral counseling mm-hmm. for those who are struggling. I have to clarify here that it's those who feel that they want to discover their own identity in Christ. That means they are. They, they, they are going through their pain and they, and they want to find out more about themselves, then they mm. will kind of find us through either they have heard us before or probably to the website and so okay. forth. Okay? Okay. Um, and we also provide uh, pastoral care and pastoral counseling for their family members, especially parents. Mm. So that is in the area of relate. Mm. So advocate is probably what I'm doing today with you, having this yeah. chat, hoping that... Um, um, those who do not know much about this topic will not discriminate or will not even be judgmental, but instead, how can we have dialogues? How can we connect? How can we still with our differences, you know, mm-hmm. we can have a platform safe enough to engage and talk. Yeah. 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 And of course, lastly, our mission will be educate, whereby uh, those who are ready, you know, people, a group of them, a handful of them, or maybe church themselves, mm. uh, they want to equip their people to know how to uh, journey or how to connect or how to support somebody who is in pain in this area who wants help. Mm. So it's only for those who want. Okay. Know? Those who do not want, like honestly speaking, Pastor, you know, I, I don't go to the to the gay bars and say, hey, come, come, come. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that, okay? Yes. Yeah. yes. Because uh, it's not for me to impose change on people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. Now, we talk about pursuing liberty. Mm, mm. So at the end of the day, if someone does... So, so let's say a, a practicing gay or okay. lesbian, mm. uh, they come in, I would assume that 
the end goal would be change. Will it be that, mm. or is it constant just uh, dialogue? Mm, okay. How, well, that's a, that's how will it? Because you wow. say don't ask marketplace questions. <laughs> <laughs> now you're asking a biblical question. <laughs> well, I think I think we uh, I think first thing first is we need to define what change is. Yeah. Okay. What is transformation? All right. Uh, maybe some people would think that hey, you have to get married, then that is change. Mm-hmm. Or uh, you know you have to be totally clean. What is it clean in a sense? Okay. Mm-hmm. So in in our ministry, our definition of change is this. Okay. We like I say just now, we are in no position to force or impose change on anybody. Mm. Our role is to walk with them. But at the end of the day, there is, a, there is an end goal. Yeah. Okay? The end goal is not about this person from an LGBTQ become a heterosexual. That's not the end goal. Yep. You know? The end goal is that this person have the awareness to pursue that which is of God. Yeah. That means, uh, if I use a very biblical thing, is pursuing holiness. Lah. Then yes. people say, ah, holiness, ah, wow, very big word. Wow. A process. Yes, a process. So it's actually, it's, it's actually uh, they will come to a stage where in their journey, mm-hmm. they exercise their muscles to say no to the things that's not of God. Okay. And, and the end goal here is that as they do that, you know, there will be that increase or there will be that process of what we call sanctification, okay? The process mm-hmm. of change mm-hmm. into more of Christ-likeness. I see. Yes, yes. So you are encouraging them to, you know, go through that process. But even I, 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 from what I get, even in that process, there is still the grace um, that, you know. I think, I think any one of us, uh, even in that process, they will mm-hmm. be up and down. Yeah. Okay. There will be moments where uh, uh, they will be dry. There will be moments where they are just so passionate and so active, you know, and they are mm-hmm. so much into that, that following Jesus. But there will be moments where they are still searching. They are still, uh, what do you call, uh, growing in their faith, all right? Mm-hmm. So whatever stage they are in, okay, I would say that uh, for some of them, we journey with them longer. Mm-hmm. But for some of them, they have churches like yours, you know, and, yep. and they, are, they feel that they have a community of faith that can walk with them, yep. a whole kampong that can walk with them. Mm-hmm. So with that, uh, we would be probably much more on the sidebar and mm. as and when when they need to chat when they need yeah. to bounce some things yeah. then we will be there yeah. yeah so it's like a safe space a safe yes, haven yes 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 providing a safe space yes mm. and i think that should be the church's role as well mm. Mm. a safe space yeah for people yes but know, i also like need. to define the word church <laughs> Yes, <laughs> because sure. church is not just the building. Okay, yep. it's not just the name uh, per yep. se or the denomination. Mm-hmm. But I think church will be a, a community of faith, mm-hmm. of that that maybe range from a, a small number to a big number, and there's a mm-hmm. church. But this community of faith is authentic enough, and honest enough, and and they would be uh, willing to actually. Be that safe space. When we talk about safe space, means what? It means that um, there would not be judgmental statements, discrimination, you know, or, yep. or even if that person fail, uh, would I be willing to continue to give an opportunity, exercise mm-hmm. grace? Yep. But this grace is within God's truth as well. It doesn't mean that hey, continue fail lah, continue sin lah. You know, it's not that. Yeah. 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 Able to speak truth lah with yes. love. Yeah. We talk about church as a community of faith mm. and speaking truth in love. Um, now, we, we tend to, for me, you know, you read the Bible, the Bible speaks clearly on what are sins and what is not sin. Mm-hmm. But somehow we always, now I may not say all churches, all pastors, but I feel that somehow generally we kind of stop short when we talk about homosexuality, mm-hmm. like, okay, is it sin? Is it not a sin? What would be your stand on this matter? I think uh, if we look at um, the Old Testament, all right, um, um, it's not just only pointing to uh, homosexual sin. Yeah. All right, you have 
um, sin of committing adultery, mm-hmm. you know, uh, premarital sex, and yep. um, even bestiality and so forth. You know, mm-hmm. it, it is the moral standard of God that that has never changed. All right, from the Old Testament that moves on to the New Testament. So, so God's standard in terms of that moral issues is is it remains the same. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, even though uh, I journey with people, and uh, they know our stand. Mm. Our stand is very clear. One mm. man, one woman, one husband, one wife, till death mm. do us part. Mm. That is God's original creation, yeah. his, his original intention. Yeah. Okay? So we, we do not, uh, what we call, uh, um, you know, we... Deviate. We don't deviate from that, yeah. okay? Yeah. We do not deviate. But at the same time, uh, we exercise a balance between grace and truth. Because mm-hmm. we understand that that person has lots of residues. That person has lots of things to work on. And mm. it is a journey of sanctification. Yeah. Okay. So with that, if God has been very gracious to us and exercise that period of grace and time for us to be molded and continue to do so to yeah. into His likeness, why can't we practice that? Yeah. I don't use the Bible to whack people. I always yeah. tell people, yeah. you know, I say, hey, the Bible is to whack yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 66 books, huh? you work 66 days and come back yeah. to it again. Yeah, true. But yeah. I feel that, uh, do, you, do you also feel that in this day and age, it's increasingly a challenge mm. to call an apple an apple, <laughs> an orange an orange, and yeah. to call yeah. sin a sin? Mm. Mm. You know, because you have things uh, on TV, on social media, yeah. that it's telling our generation otherwise. Mm. And you know, so how how do you address this challenge? I think first thing first, as a Bible believing Christian, um, I have to constantly remind myself to walk my talk. Yeah. Okay, because if I were to walk my talk, when I when I call an apple an apple is apple and apple la. Yeah. It won't become apple and become pineapple la. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so with that, uh, you actually um, have that opportunity to speak to the life of people. Yeah. You know, but if I Practice double standard. Mm-hmm. If I am very harsh on somebody who's practicing you know, same sex, you know, but but I'm not harsh on someone who is committing adultery, then mm-hmm. I'm practicing double standard. Yeah. So so if if I do that, I won't blame that person for not uh, kind of like receive or accept whatever that I say. Yeah. You know? That's right. So I think first thing first for us, uh, I I would encourage myself personally. Yeah to remind myself to always walk my talk mm. and no double standard. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, like what I always tell people um, mm. in my encounter conversations mm. when they ask me about this issue, and you may correct me if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm open <laughs> to correction. But for me, it's, it's, it's like what, like going along what you said, um, I say we don't particularly highlight this sin. Mm. But a sin is a sin. But yes. we don't particularly say, oh, this stands above all mm. sins and, and you know as so such people who mm. practice this sin but you know it's it's a sin it's yeah. the same as lying it's the same as telling a white lie yeah. it's the same as cursing someone on your way here because of the bad traffic and someone cut into your yeah. leg it's the same it's all yes. on the same and yes. and for every sin mm. uh, you know sanctification is needed yeah right we, that, a sin is a sin la. I mean um I'm very sure that when Jesus was approached by, you know, the the, the sinners and the tax collectors, yeah. I don't think Jesus would say that, hey, you continue going to watch porn. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> you continue to sleep <laughs> around. No, Jesus would never say that. Yeah. You know, he doesn't compromise. Yes. So I think for, for us, uh, I have to ask myself, am I compromising? Mm. Okay. Uh, I don't compromise the truth of God. They know very well. Mm. Uh, but the thing is this, as I, uh, as I share with them, about this truth, I must not forget that they do need mm-hmm. time. They do need us to give opportunity because God is giving them that opportunity. Mm-hmm. God is giving us second chance, third chance. In fact, many chances in yeah. a way. Yep. Okay? Um, as long as God has never stopped giving them that opportunity, why should, why should I? Yes. Why yes. should I? They know very well. I think anyone who, is, who has committed a sin Mm. If they are convicted by the Holy Spirit, huh? Yeah. Then mm. they would have that fear, they would have that shame, 
Mm-hmm. You know, they, they in fact they want to run away. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I'm not called to rub salt onto their wound. I'm not called yeah. to, you know, to make them feel even worse. Yep, that's yeah, that's true. I don't think I'm called to do that. You're called to treat the wound. <laughs> well, I'm just called to walk with them. Treat the wound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm even not the one that's gonna treat them, you know. I, I just walk okay. with them and uh, prayerfully with that they are not alone in that journey. Yeah. Yeah. So um, your ministry, I would say then, it's to really partner with these people, journey with them, and when they are ready. Yes. I, I think the key word you have already say. Yes. When they want, mm. uh, as long as they're willing, mm-hmm. uh, they are willing to be vulnerable, to allow us into their life, and we're very honoured and mm. humbled to be given that opportunity. Yep. And we just support along the way. Mm. Uh, because the one that is touching their life, the one that is healing them is not us, but is Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Does your ministry face uh, increasing challenge or quote-unquote persecution because of, you know, the culture mm. of today? Okay. Like you go on Netflix, um, almost every movie will insert element of of LGBT into it. Mm. So I would assume that for a ministry to say, to even use that in pursuing liberty (laughs) under Christ, you know, and then, you know, to say that ultimately when you're ready, we want you to change, to even Mm. use that word sometimes is politically wrong nowadays. (laughs) Do you face challenge, persecution? Okay. I think in certain countries, um, it will be uh, using the word change is possible, is politically incorrect. Okay, mm-hmm. it's because it has already been hijacked. Yeah. Okay. So if I were to say, hey, transformation in Christ is possible, if the person allows God to to do the work in the person's life, that it is possible. Mm-hmm. It's not just only for gender issues; it's for anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as you you you're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you change will take place. Mm. And the end goal of this change is because whatever that's stopping this change from taking place, especially when a person chooses not to believe, then if that unbelief has been removed, the veil has been removed. Mm. The Word of God speaks very clearly when the veil has been removed, you know, it, it is, you know, we will experience God's glory and we'll be more transformed into the image of God. Yeah. You know, so, so when we talk about pursuing liberty under Christ, okay, we are saying that a person who is willing mm. to partner with God and allow God to, to do that changes. No one is going to force anybody to change, not even God. Mm. Okay, why do I say that? Uh, if you look at um, Adam and Eve, a lot of people say, you know, I got a lot of clients that say that, uh, why, why God don't stop me? Uh? <laughs> why God don't stop me from watching porn? And why don't God, don't God, uh, why, why God don't spot, uh, stop me from, you know, and indulging into lust? Yeah. I say it's not that God don't stop you. God has given you this free will. Free will, yes. And if he were to remove that that day and say and stop Adam yeah. from taking that forbidden fruit, there's no different with AI today. Yeah. True. But we are we are created in his image and he has made us of all his creation the closest. Mm-hmm. In fact, he breathed life into the man. Mm-hmm. Okay. And from that man God has created the woman. Mm-hmm. You know, and together, God has called them to actually rule the world. Mm. You know, equality had already taken place during the days of Genesis. Yep. But today, we are talking about gender equality, which is very different. Yeah. You know, it's all because of an ideology. Yeah. You know, this, this ideology is such that, hey, if you don't support what I'm doing today, you're homophobic. Yeah, that's so right. So, can I, can I say this to... You know, those who are listening today, yeah. you know, first thing first is, well, I've been, I, I choose to follow Jesus, all right? Uh, mm-hmm. Even though in, in my early days, I follow half-heartedly, mm. okay? But today, I choose to follow Him and God is working in my life. He's changing me. I no longer want to be a lesbian. I want mm. to follow Jesus. I want to live a life that is, uh, that is doing what He desired me to do, mm-hmm. Okay. Whether I get married or not, you know, that's a different question. Yeah. Okay, because that's not the measuring rod. But I choose yeah. to follow. I choose to, to, to go back to his original creation, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, to death to his part, in a yeah. way. Okay? Yeah. And if I choose to do that, 
does it mean that I'm homophobic just because I do not want to be a lesbian anymore? Mm. And there are people who are in pain, by the way. Those mm. people that I, we are in contact with that come and actually talk to us, they are in pain. Mm. So can I plead to the world that give those people who are in pain an opportunity yeah. to get healing? Yeah, that's right. If, if, if the rest of you are happy, don't want to get healing, you know, we are, we are not saying that, you know, we stop you. We have no right to do that. Mm. But you too have, you know, in a way, they, they too have no right to stop those who want to follow Jesus mm. and those who want to get healing from God, yep. in a way. Yep. Yeah. So do we get uh, persecution? Mm. Uh, well, I thank God I'm in Malaysia. <laughs> <like>. <laughs> Maybe if I'm in We're some other countries, conservative yeah. Actually, like it or not, uh, uh, the the largest faith curtain kind of has protected us to a certain extent. Okay, but I, w- I want to say this that uh, yes, I have actually been through harassment before. Okay. Yes, I have been hackled before. Okay. okay? But to me, is that uh, they have their values and their stand, and and they are trying to impose that on me. Okay, mm. but I'm there to share with those who are willing to listen and those who are in pain and those who are seeking for help. Mm. So in a way, when they harass me, I can understand that uh, they, they feel that I am stopping people. <laughs> I'm encouraging and forcing, you know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. as we have conversations, they, they were once somebody harassed us mm-hmm. and we had conversation. Okay. And I begin to hear his pain, why he was so adamant in harassing us yeah. because he was hurt. I see. He was being discriminated. He was being hurt. Mm. And with that, I, all I could offer is a pair of listening ears and I'm sorry that the person has gone through that hurt. And sadly, there were times where because the, the, the church is not aware or do not know what to do, we end up saying some words that could be hurtful to them. Mm. Okay? But I think it's vice versa today. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So we need to stop that. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, we need to stop hurting uh, each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, sometimes indirectly or unknowingly mm. through certain, uh, you know, c- certain stand that we choose to hold on to mm. and the way we present truth we can present truth like Jesus, graceful, gracious, merciful. Mm-hmm. Or we can present truth like a Pharisee. This or that, you know. Um, and I think, I think that's really important, like, how we present truth. I think, I think we, don't, we, don't, uh, we don't dilute truth. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. We don't dilute truth, but truth can be presented with grace and yep. love. Yep. Yeah. Like Christ. Yes, yes. I, I, that's why we have lots mm-hmm. of room to learn. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, that's right. What, what do you think of, um, you know, how would you educate our people today with, mm. you know, the influx of information that we have? Mm, mm. I think COVID, the pandemic sort of sped yeah. up, you know, information yeah. delivery rate. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, and, and then nowadays we are so open every every form of media yeah true and our next generation's worldviews are shaped not by their parents but shaped by Netflix YouTube Spotify even yes <laughs> you know? yes and, and podcast yes yes <laughs> hopefully my podcast does a little bit to help shape your worldview <laughs> how would you uh, you know go about educating mm, I, I think uh, uh, there's lots of room for community of faith to grow eh? for church to grow I think first thing first is let's not uh, let's let's be fair to have uh, a lot of issues being spoken being yeah. addressed let's not be afraid okay yeah. um, and I think uh, like I said just now we need a balance between grace and truth okay so first thing first is we have conversations like what we're doing today it's mm-hmm. a very good, uh, I think it's a good start, okay? Yep. Um, I would encourage the young people as they hear this, or mm-hmm. even not only young people, okay, it's intergen today, all right? Different generation coming together and yep. anybody can listen to this today. Yes. I think first thing first is when you listen, if you have 
questions, okay, I think very automatically they will ask Mr. Google. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but asking Mr. Google, uh, let's be fair. Okay, I think a lot of time, lots of, uh, lots of information. Or, or now they ask chat GPT. Yes, they ask the yeah. chat. Yes. So, and they will give you <laughs> lots of answers. Yes, yes. And, and whether you realize it or not, the answers will be depending on whatever that they have collected. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a, and a lot of information is very pro. Okay, let's be fair. Let's let's really dig deep into even those that may not be supporting pro. And you have two stands there, and I'm sure that our listeners today, okay, they are wise enough. They are, you know, uh, responsible enough to actually weigh the information that you get. Mm -hmm. If you are hearing from this side, this side says that oh, change is not possible, and the Bible is not true. That and then let's go to another camp. And also hear from this side, yeah. You know, and and from there, you can even have conversations with people who have gone through it, yeah. And I'm sure that this side will say that you know it's so painful for change. Da da da. I don't want to have change, or because their their values differ from yours. So first thing first is they need to know their values. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you call yourself a Bible believing Christian, let's go back to the Word of God. Yeah. Okay. But we do have a challenge today. Uh, some people misinterpreted the Word of God too. Uh. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I came across a TEDx talk mm. by a so-called pastor okay. who says that uh, the Bible is uh, gay affirming. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you've come across that TEDx talk, you know. I didn't come, but I know very well <laughs> that there are, there are different views, okay? Because there, are, there, there will be a group that uh, revisit the Bible. So mm -hmm. they're called the revisionists. Okay. So they will interpret the Bible according to their way. So one mm -hmm. of the interpretations will be this, that we are born this way, mm -hmm. God created us this way. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if, if they hold on to that, that we are born this way, God created us this way, well, it is very natural that they will have same-sex marriages and same-sex relationships. Mm -hmm. But they are still called Christian with a heading in front as a gay Christian. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So you have this first group. Mm -hmm. their, their, their doctrine is such that they believe that they are born this way. So okay. we are not called to change. Okay. But then there's another group that we are born with this inclination, but God mm. didn't create us this way. Okay. Okay. So this group, what they will do is this. They still call themselves Christian gay, mm -hmm. but they choose to remain celibate. Mm. Okay? okay. So are they wrong? Well, I think for me personally, if God has... Uh, if I've accepted Christ, I'm a child of God. Mm. I don't need to have a, a, a heading in front that I, you know, I'm a gay Christian because I'm not a yeah. gay in a way. Yeah. I, I'm a child of God. Yeah, okay? I'm just a Christian. As a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. If not, then uh, last time I drink before, so I'm an alcoholic, alcoholic Christian. Alcoholic Christian. <laughs> lying Christian. A lying Christian. <laughs> a cursing <Riding> Christian. Christian. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, we, we don't use that because our identity is we are a child of God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's why you see there are, there are really these two groups I see. that in a way, if, if for us who, who kind of buy their values and buy their doctrines, then mm. I'm not surprised that the tech talk that you have listened that yeah. you know, the Bible says that God is a gay affirm. Yeah. You know, God loves the gays. I want to. I want to be make it very, 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 yeah. very firm here. We affirm that loves, point. <laughs> yes. God loves the gays, yes. but God did not say that He created same-sex behavior sexually. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the difference. I think that's very important. Yeah, and that's the honest truth. I also uh, recently my wife uh, shared with me an article. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think she kind of knew I was preparing for this podcast because <laughs> I've been talking with her about it. And then she shared with me an article about this this man mm -hmm. who was living the transgender lifestyle okay. and how, you know, you talk about the pain and he talks about it in that article. And, and at, at the end of the day, it took a Christian who just plainly told him the truth mm. that you know, made him pursue truth mm, okay. and change. Mm. And he found liberty. He found peace. Mm. You know, and, and he changed his life. He turned his life around. Mm -hmm. A very complete turn. Yeah. You know, and, and, and his conclusion is not an appeal for people to change or, you know, mm. give up this. But his appeal is more so for the Christian to be daring and bold 
to tell your truth honestly. Don't beat around the bush. <laughs> That's what he says. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you know, you don't beat around the bush. <laughs> we don't. We don't. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're you're very straightforward. I think people, people we journey with, uh, they know our stand. Okay. Mm. But one thing for sure is this: um, my stand, as much as uh, we present the truth, we also love them equally. Yeah. You know. Um, I remember I have one one case, you know, this was a young chap that came and we journeyed with him for at least a few years. And uh, I think whatever consequences and things like that, we have already, we have already talked about it. Uh, he yeah. knows very well. Uh, but I've never stopped loving him. Mm. And lo and behold, one day he he came and said, you know, Trefina, I need to meet up with you. I said, okay, come, let's come back and you know, come and meet up. And he was just saying that I've just, I've just seen the doctor today, and I've been confirmed with HIV. Mm. You know, all I did was this: I just walked towards him and I gave him a big hug. Mm. You know, what right do I have to tell to, to say to him? I told you don't don't sin, and then you sin again. That that say say you know serve you right things yeah. like that. But I mean, I mean, th- that's not for me to say. Yeah, because conviction of sin comes from the Holy Spirit. Mm. But does it mean that I condone what he's doing? No. Mm. He knows very well. Mm. But it's just that I have to walk with him in a different manner now. Yep. A different face because of what he has got himself. You know? By the way, anything that we do, la, there will always be a consequences. Yeah. It's either a consequences that, that is pleasing to the Lord or the consequences that is further mm. away from God. Yep. That causes even more pain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's so true, and that's why, all the more, we need Christ to help us. In oh this yes, journey. oh yes. Yeah. Until today, I still need Christ to help me. Yes, definitely. <laughs> you and I, you and I, we are all broken people. Yes, yes, yep. we are. We are true, true. Yes. Yeah. And um, that's great. I I think we had a very good uh, session. Uh, thank you so much thank for you having so much. this chat with me. Yes, thank yeah. you so much for accepting the invitation. Oh, no, no and, worries uh, for that. wish we had more time, but we are running short of time. Yeah, but I just want to encourage those who are really in pain. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think as much as this conversation is on today, we just want you to know that, hey, um, no big deal, come and talk to us. Yep. Or talk to the church. Yes. Yeah. The church welcomes you. Yes. And we don't judge, we don't condemn. Mm. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, Reverend Trifina, <laughs> thank you so for much for this Dr. honor Man. of uh, having you on this podcast. Oh, what an honor! Thank yes, you. Thank, you. thank you, and thank you, thank so you much. everyone for tuning in to this episode, and we'll see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.